Hello everyone! Today on my hobby table we have new version of SB2209 tool headboard. I personally was waiting for this product for a while, as first generation wasn't as good as it could be. This $25 board was sent to me free of charge by Big Treat Edge. And let's open the box and look what we have inside. First we have a little box here with tool head and stealth burner plate. Let's put it aside. We have connectors which is nice to have. Let's take a look inside. Usually you have jumpers that you use to configure the board and some crimp connectors. Rubber duck, this will go in its own place. We have a tool head cable and right away out of the box I can see that this cable is thicker than one was included with third generation of the tool headboard. We have heatsink. This one is for the driver, little zip ties, thank you card, and stickers, empty box. So I have right here a cable that came with first generation. Let's compare the thickness. Let's use the thank you card and you can see that second generation cable is thicker. I'm not sure what the change is for, but it is right here. Let's take the cables out of the way. Standard set of different crimps. I'm gonna put it right here. The heatsink, the board itself, and the little front plate that goes to the self burner. Let's take a plate out of the bag. This one is going on your self burner front plate. I hope it's gonna be the same and I don't have to change the one I already have there. Okay. And let's open the board itself. Big 3 Dash completely redesigned this device and we have a lot of changes. I have pulled older board out of the printer so we could compare main features. This is the new board and this is the old board. The biggest change and most wanted by me that we finally have GST PH20 connectors. I personally had issues before with smaller connectors on previous generation and in my case end stops sometimes were losing connection even after recrimping and changing pre-crimped wires. New board has RP2040 controller which is simpler to flash compared to STM32 as there is no extra software needed just plug in it via USB holding a boot button and you will be able to just throw in the file and flash it. If you use NTC thermal sensor on your tool head, there is a good change for you too. TH0 header located in better position compared to previous generation. In my case, that was right behind the wall on the extruder and was preventing the good connection. New board has exactly the same 12 to 24 9 amp power input and ADXL 345 sensor. Previous generation had independent fan controlled voltages. On this board we have same voltage for both fans, for particling fan and for the hot end fan. It also set by the configuration jumper to incoming voltage 12 volt and 5 volts. It is very easy to note that this board doesn't have as many connectors as first generation, but there is a nice addition. You have a controlled header right here. In case you want to mount extra 24 volt fan, on the tool head or you want to use 24 volt probe, you just simply install configuration jumper right here in needed position and set the mode in which you want to use this header. This board utilizes software CAN bus implementation, which is by my research is a bit more limited than implementation with separate CAN chip and I'm not sure how it will affect the actual work of the controller, but worth mentioning. I have spent some time off camera and prepare this board. There is very good documentation how to flash new firmware on this board just to make sure that your motherboard and tool head board have same firmware installed. Also, I have noticed if you already have 
scan bus ID and you put it in, in your config, your motherboard will be able to connect to it and you no longer see it in the list of CAN bus available devices. To make sure I can retrieve the list of CAN bus IDs, I usually command all the usage of other CAN bus IDs in my settings because when CAN bus connection is open, you will have that problem that devices will not be listed. And that may create extra pain when you want to retrieve that ID and use it in order to flash the board or in order to configure the board. To install this board on a tool head, you will need little 3D printed part. This bracket is supposed to be available on a GitHub repository. If not, I will include the link because I spent some time searching for it. I also have right now some extra work to do. I need to recrimp everything. And I'm really excited to have those bigger connectors because it's so much easier to work with. I have finished crimping the wires. This is my X end stop. It's gonna be right here. And this is my warrant tab. That's how it goes right now. Also, I have crimped my PT-1000. You can see right here, I have set the setting for PT-1000. And I have set incoming voltage for the fan settings. Based on a silk screen notation right here, I can see that front plate don't need to be changed. And I will use the same one. And let's get up close shot in case someone will have to repair this board. And this is my final assembly. X and stop switch, warrant tap, my PT-1000 and heater cartridge right here. This is the first print after I have installed the tool head. I always print in the one layer or two layers just to verify that Z offset is set correctly. I haven't changed anything else other than port. So let's see how it will come out. The printer has finished the print. Let's take it out. And this is the result of two first layers printing. Looks exactly the same as it was before I changed the board. For my opinion, this is the board to go because bigger connectors, easier to crimp, the price is compelling. If this video was helpful for you, please like, subscribe, leave your comments if you have questions, and I see you at the next one. Let the force be with you.